Today I'm going to show you guys the best NVIDIA control panel settings for Modern Warfare 3, which should lead to a nice improvement in performance and visibility, whilst also making sure there's nothing outside of the game that is negatively affecting our gameplay experience. So first things first, open up your NVIDIA control panel from your desktop and head to the adjust image settings with preview. You've got three options here. The one which we want to pick is use the advanced 3D image settings. You need to make sure you've got this set so that when we move into the manage 3D settings area, which is most of the settings we're going to be covering today, those will actually apply in game. If you start doing things like use my preference quality versus performance, none of that's going to do anything. So set this the middle option, click apply, and we'll be ready to move on. Before we look at the 3D settings, a couple of other things to check. Firstly, in change resolution, make sure you've got your refresh rate actually set to the max refresh rate of your monitor. The worst thing that could happen is that you have a 240 hertz or 144 hertz and you're still running at 60. I still see this happening to a ton of people. So come in here right now, check that this number is correct. Otherwise, you're just completely missing out on most of the performance that your monitor can give. In here as well, you can check that you've got the correct resolution set, 2560 by 1440 or 1440p for me. It might be 1080p for you. Just make sure it's set correctly. Moving on to the adjust desktop color settings area. The only thing I've changed in here is digital vibrance, which is essentially how colorful does your game look? How saturated are the colors? By default on a lot of monitors, even if you've played around with the settings on them, the game still looks kind of flat. The colors don't really pop. By turning the digital vibrance up from the default of 50%, you can get some really nice looking colors. Now, personally, I wouldn't go beyond 70%. I think anything past that, the colors just look horrible and just two in your face. Uh, so I would go between 50 and 70% and find something that works for you. Now we're going to head back over to the 3D settings and run through everything in here. There are two tabs in the 3D settings area, the global settings and the program settings. We're going to be doing everything today in the program settings so that the specific stuff we dial in won't affect any other game in your system. It will only affect Modern Warfare 3. You're going to need to select Modern Warfare 3 from the list up here. If you don't see it here, you can come over to add and it will take a little bit of time to load. Then I would recommend you go to A to Z and scroll down to Call of Duty HQ, the one with the Call of Duty symbol. If you played Modern Warfare 2, you'll see one with a Modern Warfare 2 symbol in here as well. You don't want to select that one. You want this normal Call of Duty symbol. Then you just click Add Selected Program and it should appear with the logo in the drop down here. So the first setting in here is image scaling, which enables your GPU to downscale your game and then apply a load of sharpening on it to maybe gain you some performance and make the game look better. But honestly, this does not look good in Modern Warfare 3. There is actually a way that you can change this image scaling to an image sharpening option, which could be good for some people. I'm going to cover that in another video. If you want to see that, leave a comment down below. For now, I would recommend you just turn this off because image scaling is not a good option to use. Anisotropic filtering. This is something that you can actually set inside the game menus. Uh, it's called texture filtering in there, I believe. And what it does is it makes textures look better when you're looking at them from angles that aren't straight on. So essentially it just makes your game look better. And it has little to no effect on performance whatsoever on any modern PC. What I would recommend you do in here is force this to 16x, so the best option. This shouldn't have any conflicts in game, and I believe it actually makes the anisotropic filtering even better when applied. If anything, you could put this in the global settings because this looks really good for any game, but specifically for Modern Warfare 3, you definitely want 16x. The next few settings in here are all related to anti-aliasing, which determines uh, how much we can remove jaggedness from the edge of objects that we look at in game. The more anti-aliasing, the more smooth everything looks. We don't want to go and tamper with anything in here reg in regards to this. There actually isn't an anti-aliasing setting in game. It's just hard coded, hard set. We don't want to be messing around with that. So for anti-aliasing mode, make sure this is just set to application controlled. Let the game do its thing. Don't try and override anything in here. You're probably just going to do something wrong and it's going to make the game look all kinds of weird. Then for FXAA, I would stick this off because we're not trying to force some specific kind of anti-aliasing. Gamma correction, in theory, shouldn't do anything. Gamma correction hasn't been used in games in many, many years and Modern Warfare 3 being a very modern game definitely doesn't use it. So we're just going to put this to off as well. And then anti-aliasing transparency, you guessed it, we're going to turn this off as well. We're just letting the game do its thing in regards to anti-aliasing. We're not trying to force anything from the control panel. The background application max frame rate setting allows us to set a frame rate that the game will go to if we ever alt tab and do something on another screen. In theory, 
this sounds pretty good because if we alt tab out and I'm doing something over here looking up the best loadout on YouTube or something, I don't want my game running at 200 FPS in the background. I don't need it. It can just come down to 30 or so. However, we actually have a setting in game that allows us to do this and that's going to work way better because it's built native to the game than anything we can do in the control panel. So I would recommend that you force this off in here and let the game do its thing in regards to the frame rate. For CUDA GPUs, leave this at the global setting of all. In theory, this won't do anything because most people just have one GPU these days. They don't even have an integrated GPU on their CPU. They just have their Nvidia or their AMD card. You can open it and check that that's set in here correctly, but for most people, should be fine. Then CUDA SysMem fallback policy, once again, just set this to driver default. We're not trying to overwrite anything here in regards to that. Moving on to low latency mode, you've got off, on, or ultra. I still see loads of people saying, come in here and set this to ultra because then you get ultra low latency and your game's gonna feel great. It doesn't really work like that. In theory, what should happen is no matter what you set in here, it will get overwritten by your setting of reflex low latency inside of the game, which you can set to on or on plus boost. However, there are still some bugs going around that I've seen where people are setting on or ultra inside of here and it's leading to problems in game. It's leading to some sort of conflict in these latency settings. So I would highly recommend you shove this up off inside of here and then control your reflex low latency setting in game. Now, before we move on to the next setting, I've got a couple of quick questions for you. Number one, are you finding this video useful? And number two, do you want to see more of this kind of thing moving forward? Well, if you do answer yes to both of those questions, which I hope you do, then why not consider subscribing down below? It takes literally one click and you can come back and unclick it in the future if you do get bored. But I've got loads of stuff in the pipeline coming for both Modern Warfare 2 and also the Warzone updates for Urzik Stan that we've got coming at the beginning of December and you definitely are not going to want to miss it. So yeah, go down and subscribe right now. Max frame rate allows you to set unsurprisingly, the maximum frame rate that the game will be able to hit. Uh, this can help make the game feel overall nice and smooth. You're not having an FPS value that's going up and down, up and down, up and down. But you can set this in game. It's very similar to the background application max frame rate, which I recommended you turn to off. And I'm going to say do the same thing here. It's actually even more important to make sure this is off because the NVIDIA control panel max frame rate introduces more input latency than the in-game one. And that goes for not just COD, but any game that features an actual frame rate limiter inside of the game. So yeah, just force this to off. Monitor technology allows you to switch between fixed refresh and G-Sync. G-Sync being the technology that makes the monitor's refresh rate vary to stay in line with the FPS you're getting in game, which should make latency feel pretty nice. Now, I haven't gone into the depths of really getting G-Sync set up with this game at the moment. So for most people out there, if you don't really know what you're playing around with, just stick with fixed refresh. You're just going to get that max nice 144 hertz, 240 hertz, and we're not going to be messing around with that at the moment. Multi-frame sampled AA or MFAA should make any instances of MSAA anti-aliasing look better. However, Modern Warfare 3, as I said earlier, has fixed filmic SMAA built into it. So you can't even use the MSAA that this would help with. So just put this to off. It's not going to do anything. So may as well put it off. OpenGL GDI compatibility as well as OpenGL rendering GPU. I would just leave these at kind of auto or global setting or whatever. These aren't going to do anything for this game because it's not an OpenGL game. It's running on DirectX. So OpenGL ain't going to do anything. Okay, power management mode. Let's get the debate going here. Everyone is still saying to use prefer maximum performance because why not? Why not just get the max performance out of your games? Well, it's been proven on many occasions that the benchmarks between normal and prefer maximum performance are no different. You will always get the maximum performance out of your GPU when it needs it, even when you're running at normal. And by setting this to normal, you will also allow your GPU to rest when it needs to. Overall power draw and power consumption will stay low. The fans won't be ramping up all the time when you're sat in the menus for no reason. Please put this to normal and don't wear your GPU out for no reason. Preferred refresh rate, very simple. Put this to highest available. We aren't running G-Sync in this setup, so we always want the highest available refresh rate at all times. Now, the next four settings in here are texture filtering settings. The only one we're going to mess around with is quality. 
The reason being, if I change this from high performance, for example, to high quality, it actually changes the other three settings automatically. So we don't need to go and mess around with these. Now, there's a choice of two options here that I'm going to give you. You're either going to go with quality or performance. It's been shown that the high quality and the high performance options cause more issues than they're worth. Basically, if you want your game to overall look a little bit better, but maybe lose a little bit of performance, use quality. If you want to gain a little bit of FPS, but maybe lose a little bit of that quality, then use performance. The differences are quite minimal, so pick whichever one you feel, try both out, see what feels better for you. I'm going to run with performance because this is a video about getting the maximum performance out of your game. Threaded optimization should allow the game to more efficiently utilize your CPU. However, you want to put this to auto rather than on. The reason for this is that putting it to auto will only enable this as and when it needs to use it to gain more performance. If you shove this to on and force it on all the time, it might cause more issues than it's actually worth. So safe bet is to just put it auto. Last for you now, triple buffering, put this to off. This will stop any kind of weird frame buffering that could be happening that might make V-Sync or G-Sync work better. For our specific setup here and for most of you guys, triple buffering, not something we want to use. Vertical sync, make sure that this is set to use 3D application setting. That way, if you decide you want to use V-Sync inside of the game, don't know why you would, apart from if you're running G-Sync, uh, well, then it will let the game do its thing rather than trying to force anything in here. And for all of us who don't use V-Sync, it's just going to allow the game once again to control it and turn it off. Virtual reality pre-rendered frames, unsurprisingly, won't do anything because this isn't a virtual reality game. It's not got any VR elements to it, so you can just leave this at whatever it's set to. It's not going to do anything. And then the final setting in here, Vulkan slash OpenGL present method, once again, won't do anything because this game uses DirectX rather than Vulkan or OpenGL APIs as part of the rendering of the game. So yeah you can just leave this at auto, to be honest. That's probably going to be your best bet. So now that we've dialed all this in, you can come down here and click apply. It might freeze a little bit and start flickering, but when the apply disappears down here, you know that everything's locked in. You can open up your game and enjoy, hopefully, a smoother and better experience. Now that you've got those NVIDIA control panel settings dialed in, the FPS gains don't stop there. So you need to go and watch this video next, where I'll take you guys through the Modern Warfare 3 config file with all the changes you need to make. Uh, the Windows settings that you need to change for even more FPS, as well as some secret GPU tweaks that are known to help with performance even more.